Let's go and jump to the CTFs now. Totally. I'll let you kind of get it cruising, but the first example that you showcased, I loved because it was, hey, here's the issue, here's the solution, here's some other things just to know about. And then the second one, like it it found a whole lot of stuff. There were like nine different things here that's like, you know what? Hey, you can tweak this. Looks like it was super thorough. Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. And hey, I'm super excited to chat with Farhan over at Halborn. And hey, am I getting your name right, my friend? I feel like I always, I don't know, can never get the pronunciation right. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. That's Farhan. Yeah, that's my name. Excellent. Well, look, we're going to have some super cool conversation on chat GPT and artificial intelligence. But first, I think we should get the boilerplate over with. Would you mind just kind of, I don't know, coloring the picture, filling me in, tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are and what you're up to these days? Yeah, sure. So basically, as you may know, everyone has started cybersecurity when we were a kid, you know, and it was on my case as well. Uh, I started doing some reverse engineering when I was a kid, doing some malware analysis, even cracking my own games, you know, for fun, which is uh, really cool. And this is something I used to do as a kid. Now, in a more professional way, I started doing mobile reverse engineering applications and also trying to break banking systems as well on online based. And now here at Halborn, I just moved to smart contracts, how do you think? Which was kind of like the middle between breaking stuff and trying to understand how things work. Since then, I was the principal security engineer at Halborn. Now I'm the principal security architect here at Halborn, which I'm basically helping on R&D tools for the teams and trying to as well do some audits in parallel. Super cool. Well, hey, I am one of the uh, principal security researchers over at Huntress, but it's interesting because I always focus a little bit more on the endpoint, like, hey, the classic computer device, a host, but you're in a whole other world that I'll admit is a little bit I don't know, different from what I'm up to. So I am excited to learn a little bit more about hey, blockchain and the Web3 tech here, especially security. Now with this new advent of artificial intelligence and chat GPT, uh, are you using that a whole lot in the work that you do? Can chat GPT help hack uh, a lot of these smart contracts or what's it look like? So I guess that we are uh, in cybersecurity, we're starting to push AI tools to help us on on our daily work, you know, and it's in our case, in a smart contract audit, uh, you know, automated scans has been part of our process since the beginning. And AI tools are helping out on finding those patterns in a more faster and easier way. You know, and this is helping us focusing on the hard work and the quality of the content that we provide to our clients. So I guess that, yes, we are integrating AI on our daily basis. I guess that almost all cybersecurity companies are trying to push those AI tools on their end. So uh, we are doing the same here at Halberd. I think a little bird told me I haven't had a chance to dig into it just yet, but it sounds super interesting. You guys had put out a report, like a little bit a more tactical detail on chat GPT and how it interfaces well with what you're up to. Do you have that report or any cool insights from it? Yeah, sure. So actually, Mar Aquila on our company uh, put like a really great report on ChatGPT and the difference between the 3.5 and the 4 version. And it's comparing a little bit on how the tool is capable of finding more concrete and non-vulnerabilities like pattern ways. And also how it's capable of achieving and solving CTF challenges from the real world, you know, like Ethernet, uh, damn vulnerable, Effie, Defi, and so on. So so uh, it's a really nice report that you could take a look and, and read. And probably here on the interview, we'll be just scrolling through. Excellent. Do you see a huge difference in that 3.5 like versus version 4? Like, Is it continuing to evolve and get better for a lot of the cybersecurity tooling? Yes, definitely it does. So the cool thing about the 3.5 version is the speed, uh, not just for finding issues on, on a smart contract, but also on any different aspects of the tool. And for the 4 version, the, we have seen that the prompts that we provide to it are more predictable, let's say. It is capable of finding the issues more consistently and giving us better output on anything that we, we throw to it. Cool. Well, hey, I for one would love to see it in action. I don't know if you've got a, a demo or any sweet tricks up your sleeve, uh, but hey, the floor is yours, my friend. Anything that we could just dig into? Yeah, sure. I actually have prepared uh, some demos. Uh, we will be going through two different demos. First of all, we'll be trying to uh, throw some already known issues into the prompt and then we will be trying to solve some CTFs. So let's dig in. Let's go and actually see a quick demo. I have prepared here two demos. First of all, this is smart contract. As you may 
scenario here, there is a really known vulnerability which consists on using TX origin as the authentication or the reback user. This can be easily phished. So for example, imagine that I'm sending an email to someone to trigger a transaction on a smart contract which are unknown. I can possibly skip this authentication phase by just using the origin. So let's see if uh, ChatGPT is capable of finding the issue here. So can you find an issue here? Just, just like that. Let's see if it can find it like that. Not even asking for vulnerabilities. Uh, by the way, we are using ChatGPT version 4. By the way, it looks like it was capable of finding the issue. As I already told you, it's quite known to not use the transaction origin for the actual authentication part of a smart contract. And as you can see here, it is telling you the issue and some possible example attack scenarios for you to understand better. And also, what will be the solution, which the solution in this case is just using the message sender instead of the transaction origin for the authentication. Uh, also, some side notes and the reentrancy on possibly on the transfer part, which is really cool as well, and the version of Pragma, which is quite old as well. So this is really cool. As you can see here, it was capable of extracting some really known patterns from this smart contract. Let's do the same for a little bit more complex one. So in this case, there is not a small description on the issue here, but I will be just providing this part here. Let's see if we can find an issue. Uh, can you find an issue here? Let's do the same. So it looks like it was capable of finding something. And uh, basically, in this smart contract, before going through what ChatGPT found, the idea is that this require is not correct, okay? Uh, it should be less than and equal than the balances, not amount equal, greater than or equal than the balances. This allows you to provide any amount which will basically satisfy this require and you will be capable of transferring funds from the contract to yourself, okay? So here, the ChatGPT was capable of finding this statement, as I told you, and also it is stating that this message sender transfer can have a re vulnerability, which is right. In this case, we already know from several versions on the smart contracts, this transfer does limit the amount of gas, which will not allow you to actually trigger again a call and drain the contract. But anyway, it is capable of finding a potential re attack and also some other stuff like using assert instead of require and reprocreating some other functions and so on. So as you can see, it is capable of extracting a lot of information for the smart contracts. So um, John, let's go and jump to the CTFs now. Totally. I'll let's let you kind of get it cruising, but uh, at least from my perspective, the first example that you showcase, I loved because it was, hey, super comprehensive, like here's the issue, here's the solution, and here's some other like context. Here's some other yep. things just to know about the additional notes. Um, and then the second one, like the, it <laughs> it found a whole lot of stuff. Like, man, there were like nine different things here that's like, you know what? Hey, you can tweak this. You know what? You can fix this. So even in that like super short 30 lines of code or whatever, looks like it was super thorough. Yeah, in that, definitely it does a really good job on finding those spotters. But as I will be commenting later on, um, ChatGPT works really good on finding patterns. It is not capable of really understanding logic behind it, okay? So on the CTFs, you will see what I'm talking about. Basically, the tool is capable of finding issues that have been seen on the model before the training aspect, okay? So ChatGPT is from 2021, I believe, 2022, the, la the latest data. So everything that happened after that is not that good at finding things. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So actually here in the prompt, you can actually ask uh, if you want the solution or if you want to, to have have, you know, uh, a recommendation of how to solve those issues. This is just throwing you a bunch of information. Let's go and see a real world scenario. In this case, we are going to the Ethernet CDF. So the whole idea of this is if we are, you know, that some uh, security companies do some technical challenges to you in order to get inside of it. So the whole idea of this report was to actually see if ChatGPT was capable of solving those challenges for the entry aspect of the company. So let's go and do an Open Zeppelin Ethernet demo. We'll be starting with the fallback contract. Let me go through directly on where the issue is. And first of all, let's copy that and throw it to ChatGPT. Can you find any security issue here. Let's throw the contract and let's see where the actual issue is. So meanwhile, first of all, <laughs> ChatGPT is already knowing that you can take over the ownership of this contract, which is the whole point of this challenge, is to be able to be the owner of the contract. There are many different ways to be the owner. In this case, as you can see here, the receive function, which is basically the one that accepts ethers from a third party, allows you to be the owner of the contract if you have contributed to this contract using 
using the contribute function, okay? So ChatGPT is capable of seeing that and basically telling you what will be the steps that you need to follow to solve this issue, okay? Uh, in this case, I can ask ChatGPT, who can I be the owner for this contract? Who can I be the owner of this contract? Let's see if ChatGPT is capable of finding what I have to do to solve this challenge. It looks like it is capable of understanding who will be the owner on the constructor part of the smart contract. And here it's telling me that to exploit this contract, I will have to call the contribute function, ensure that the total contribution exceeds the current owner contribution, as we can see here on the require. And then basically I will be the owner if I send funds. Okay. So that's how ChatGPT is capable of solving this challenge. Any questions here, John? I'm thinking, because again, I know, hey, super distilled. Hey, we just got the little sandbox environment for a capture the flag context, but it's so cool to me that it basically gives you like the solve.py script or, hey, here's the solution. Here's how to do hmm. it. Are those things that you could then, I don't know, just take into the terminal and then interact with the smart contract in the way that you would? Is this everything that you need as a tester and as an auditor? Okay, so that's another point here. So it's telling you what you have to do, but not how to. Right. Okay. So in the how to aspect, you could actually ask ChatGPT to provide a JSGS script or Python script to interact with the contract. Okay. Because at the end, in order to call these functions, you will have to call the AVI of the smart contract in the specific address that you have deployed. So of course you can ask GPT, Hey, I want the JavaScript or the Python script to solve that. Okay. Because it already know how to do it. So basically it will be translating those S steps into a GS or Python file. So yeah. Sweet. So I guess that now we should probably go to the hardest one. As you can see, those are really common patterns. At the end, it is capable of understanding those patterns. But as I already told you, those challenges were on the model before the release. Okay. Right. So what happens if we try a more complex challenge, which was not on the model after the release? So let's go and try the Nave receiver challenge, which was published nine months ago. So let's go and test that. In this case, as you can see here, this challenge is two smart contracts. ChatGPT being an LL model, it's capable of understanding all the syntax in a different way. So first of all, let's go and see what the actual challenge is. In this case, as you can see here, this is the description. I will not be going through, otherwise it will be too complex, but I will just copy that description, which is telling me what I have to do to ChatGPT and providing the contracts to it. So let's go and grab the contracts. In this case, this one. So contract number one here and contract number two. Let's go and grab the second one. And I will explain in meanwhile what the issue is. So basically, it, it is doing something. So the idea of this contract is that we are provided a flash loan contract that we can interact with, okay? So we can borrow funds for this smart contract here, and it will be calling the receiver, which is in this case us, the on flash function, okay? This on flash function is controlled by us. So the whole idea is that we can re-enter the contract in order to call again the flash loan and extract all the funds. I know this is a more complex issue. If you don't understand the technical aspects of it, it doesn't matter. Just we want to see if ChatGPT is capable of finding this, okay? So if we see here, it looks like it is doing something. Yeah, it is talking about reentrancy attacks and probably providing us an exploit for it, which is a really cool feature. And I can tell you that this is looking really good. <laughs> the whole idea of this contract is to actually call it with zero ethers and calling it with zero ethers will actually have to pay the fees for it and drain this smart contract. It looks like it was capable of providing a good proof of concept, but not the whole the full solution. So as you may know, this is an LLM model. So if we ask for the solution or a prompt again, it will be giving us a completely different output. So we could be doing that until we find a good solution for the smart contract. But I can tell you that at the end, it will be doing so. Were there a couple of the tidbits in the mix? I know you said, hey, you can run this with zero ETH and that would keep sort of draining it. Is that right? I know it yeah. suggested number, like just passing and one, is that just a small idiosyncrasy that makes a big difference here? Oh, uh, well, actually, um, you will have to test it yourself, but okay. not really. I mean, the end, the solution for the challenges is to drain the entire right. contract. So yeah. Cool. I'm, hey, I don't know about you, but I'm a little impressed that it was able to at least get the bare bone basics of that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can see here, it is giving a complete proof of concept. So as you can see, one of the uh, hardest aspects of this model is the consistency of it. Okay. So as I already told, you it's capable of finding really nicely all the patterns for really simple issues okay but it's not consistent and not precise enough to find really complex issues and logical issues on 
and smart contracts that are more larger. Well, hey, so I will admit I use chat GPT whenever I'm cruising through capture the flag challenges. And I, I have no doubt, look, it can be super duper helpful for just about any field and smart contracts are no exception. Uh, so if I may, I'd love to ask you, how are you feeling? Like, does AI a little bit spook you out? Or, uh, I don't know. Are you worried about, oh, we're losing our jobs as auditors and security testers with this whole advent? But I don't know. Do you still feel like there are any ethical considerations in the mix just as well? Like if you just keep slapping in code for real or genuine audits that you're doing, is that even the right thing to do? Hmm. So I remember the the first time that ChatGPT came out, you know, on the company, we had like two people, two, two, two different type of persons. First of all, we had the person that were like, yeah, oh my God, this is going to completely remove our jobs. <laughs> right. And then we were the more expertise and experienced people on the company that we were like, yeah, well, this is not going to remove our jobs because I, I know that this is not going to find all the logical bugs and complex ones. But of course, we can see that as a solution or something that helps us to be faster on our our job, which is basically what we are doing and using it for. So some ethical concerns about that is that we cannot directly use the client's data, of course, if we don't have an agreement for it. And it's quite complex to throw that information into an LLM model, which is at the end using those informations to train again the model. So we can, yeah, we cannot use the client data on our end. So we have to somehow mask it or provide like some chunks of code, which sadly sometimes it just skips uh, the bugs because it has it doesn't have the, the whole content Context for it. Yeah, the big picture. And especially I think that key word you said here, look, the context that we like us people and real folks kind of taking a look at it, digging into it manually with our own eyes. That's still key. Well, chat GPT can at least supplement some of the work that we do. So maybe that's the reality check is, hey, it's another tool in your toolkit. But look, that report that you guys put together, especially showcasing, look, some of the improvements, some of the new features, new great success. Uh, maybe that is a, a cool, I don't know, little benchmark as to where things are and where things keep cruising. Uh, how could folks track down that report? I can add a link in the description or are there any other resources or sweet things that we think, hey, folks should know about? Yeah, sure. I will actually recommend you to go and read the report because it's going deeply on all the common issues that smart contracts have and actually it's comparing the 3.5 and 4 versions. So probably it will adapt you on the speed and so on. So yeah, I will like you to, to keep a link on the description so everyone can just read it. Well, hey, this has been awesome and super duper cool. Really interesting to think, hey, you know, chat GPT and artificial intelligence is helping, but there are some limitations, some things to consider, and especially some ethical stumbling blocks that we all got to keep in mind. So thank you so much, Ron. And hey, kudos to you all at Halborn for doing some incredible work and keeping on top of all this. Thank you again and again. Thank you, John. Pleasure for me.